In the shadows of the granite and Coxcomb Mountains, along a lonely and desolate desert highway, lie the remains of Camp Coxcomb, one of 11 divisional training camps of the Desert Training Center. Constructed in the summer of 1942, this three square mile camp was one of the busiest of the divisional camps housing and supplying almost 15,000 soldiers. These men were there to complete their final 14 week training before they were sent off to North Africa or Europe to stop the advance of the German and Italian forces. My name is Bill Berry. Welcome to my desert adventures. Over the past two months, I've been out to the Camp Coxcomb area three different times with my friends Robert Marcos, Sid Burks, Ron Salute, and Jim Gilmore. We've had the opportunity to explore not only Camp Coxcomb, but also the maneuver areas of Palin Pass and the Granite Mountains, as well as the training areas at the base of the Coxcomb Mountains. On our first trip out, we decided to go through Palin Pass and have a look at where they performed all of their maneuvers. So what are we doing out here today, Bill? Well, Robert, we're at the entrance to the Palin Pass Road, and this is the um, this is our first adventure going to look at some of the maneuver areas that were actually part of the actual war games that occurred here back in uh, in the 1940s. Oh my God! Yeah. So, Sid, how many camps total were there? Eleven. Eleven, but this particular. Uh, maneuvering area, did they all come together somehow? Yeah, this was like a, at the, at the end of the training they had this big maneuver and they brought in all the different camps, so this was like the final test. The 11 mile trek up Palin Pass Road was fun and it put my truck through its 4x4 four four paces. When we got into the pass we found an area where a truck was obviously used as a target for tanks. And on the eastern side of the pass, we found the remains of hundreds of tracks formed by columns of armored vehicles as they made their way into the pass for maneuvers. On my second trip out to the Palin Pass and Coxcomb Camp area, I took my friend Ron Salute. Ron's an army vet who was once in supply and support. So Ron, tell me, when did you go into the army? I joined the army in 1963. Ron and I started our tour of Camp Coxcomb at the headquarters area where a large circle had been constructed to prominently display the American flag for all to see each day. So Ron, here we are at the uh, administrative headquarters of Camp Coxcomb and really the only re there are no tents, there's, there are no tanks, there's, the, the armored division is long gone, but the remnants of the camp are still very clear. There was a fenced area about 200 yards from the big circle where the soldiers had constructed a relief map of the maneuver area. These relief maps allowed the officers to plan their attacks and defenses during war games. Water was the most important necessity at these desert camps. General Patton had planned the locations of the camps well, with an eye for where the new California aqueduct was located. Just a mile from the camp was an unlimited water source. Ron and I then followed the aqueduct to a break where we were able to drive to the base of the Coxcomb Mountains. We could see the old tank and armored vehicle tracks where young tank commanders were taught how to navigate difficult terrain. On my last trip out to the camp, I took my friend Jim Gilmore. We spent several hours exploring areas around Camp Coxcomb. Although it was clear that there was a ton of activity out here, it's hard to tell exactly what was happening in the different areas of the camp. They had motor pools, a hospital, an area with wooden structures to house and protect radio equipment, and mess halls. One company commander had his own concrete slab poured for his quarters and office and we were able to find the date when it was poured. We also found the remnants of company flagpoles along with company insignias and names. We discovered debris left by the soldiers throughout the camp and you could feel the spirit of camaraderie and survival everywhere you turned. 
So we're puzzled as to what this little ramp is. So what, Jim, you thought it might have been an incinerator. Yep, or a burn pit of some sort. Or like for burning things. Um, we saw a, we saw a place where they made a little basin not too long ago on the other side of the camp for water. There's a ramp that goes up. You go up the ramp and you come to a buried 50 gallon drum. That's a 50 gallon drum, isn't it? Yeah, yes, I'm sorry. Well, we're not sure. It's amazing to me how they took so much time to make it as nice as possible and make it look like a, their, their neighborhood, which is was for a short period of time. Well, it's clear that there are many more stories to be discovered exploring these camps. I plan on going back again to Camp Copscombe and look for the area where soldiers planted ocotillo and barrel cactus to spruce up their areas. I also found on Google Earth the location of a church service area that I want to photograph. It looks like there are a number of episodes about these camps on the horizon. Until then, we look forward to having many more desert adventures. Mm -hmm.